James P. O'Shaughnessy, What Works on Wall Street, A Guide to the Best Performing Investment Strategies of All Time. Want to unlock the secrets of investing success? Dive into the summary of James P. O'Shaughnessy's What Works on Wall Street, as it unveils the best performing investment strategies over time. Dissecting the age-old debate of passive versus active investing, the book highlights the power of investing in stocks through traditional value measures while avoiding risky strategies. Drawing on a wealth of data spanning 45 years, our summary delivers valuable insights on management styles, price-to-book ratios, dividend yields, growth factors and more. Embark on a journey to unravel the most impactful factors that drive market returns and strike gold with rigorously tested, effective investment strategies. Beating the stock market made simple. If you want to outperform the stock market, ditch chasing tips, active management, and predicting competitors. Instead, opt for passive management and invest in undervalued companies with traditional value measures and a strong record of price appreciation. This strategy delivers better returns with less risk. Investors can choose between two approaches, passive or active. While passive investors rely on index funds, active investors try to beat the market by picking stocks. However, the majority of actively managed mutual funds fail to outperform the S&P 500. Thus, the popularity of passive investing is growing, and index funds have grown from $10 billion to $250 billion. Despite this, the price of a stock is still determined by people. Fear, greed, hope, and ignorance will continue to misprice stocks and present opportunities for those who rigorously use simple, time-tested strategies to pick stocks. The Pitfalls of Active Investing The failure of active investing lies in human folly and emotion, causing investors to fall for unreliable patterns and let their best intentions be consumed. A successful investing model has explicit rules, public guidelines, reliable and objective criteria, and credible data. Following an investment model requires discipline and ignoring negative headlines. The stock market rewards certain types of stocks, particularly small stocks and market leaders, while punishing others. Low price-to-book ratios lead to market rewards, and high ones lead to punishment. Overall, investing requires consistency and patience, choosing a disciplined strategy and sticking to it, even in times of low performance. Mastering Stock Investment Strategies This book summary explores various strategies used in stock investments, highlighting the importance of using metrics like P-E ratios, price-to-book ratios, price-to-cash flow ratios, price-to-sales ratios, and dividend yields. Investing in the stock market can be overwhelming, especially for beginners. One of the fundamental things investors need to understand is how to evaluate stocks before investing in them. This summary delves into five crucial strategies that investors can use to identify the best stocks to invest in. The first strategy is the price-to-earnings (PE) ratio, which measures a company's current stock price compared to its earnings per share (EPS). This strategy shows that investing in companies with low PE ratios is more profitable in the long run, especially among large stocks. Conversely, Investing in high P.E. stocks is dangerous and often leads to poor returns. The second strategy involves the price-to-book P.B. ratio, which divides the current stock price by the stock's book value. This strategy proves buying stocks with low P.B. ratios and avoiding high P.B. valuations leads to better returns. The author also suggests investing in large stocks with low P.B. ratios since they are less risky. The third strategy, price-to-cash flow (P/CF) ratio, determines a company's value compared to its cash flow by dividing the stock's market value by its cash flow. Large stocks with low P/CF ratios are found to perform better over the long term, while those with high P/CF ratios yield poor returns. The fourth strategy, price-to-sales (P/S) ratio, measures a company's price based on revenue rather than profits. Investing in stocks with low P.S. ratios saw more substantial returns over 45 years than other metrics. 
Additionally, investing in large stocks with low P.S. ratios ensures investors take on fewer risks. Finally, investors can also consider dividend yields. The author suggests examining a stock's annual dividend rate divided by its current price. Large stocks with high dividend yields yield greater returns than all stocks with high dividend yields, while utility stocks with high yields underperform the market. Investors must master these essential strategies to navigate the stock market better. With proper research and these metrics in mind, investors can make solid investments and achieve long-term success. The Pitfalls of Single-Year Earnings Growth and Other Investment Strategies This book summary explores the effectiveness of various investment strategies over a 45-year time frame. The author argues that focusing solely on one-year earnings per share growth does not lead to profitable outcomes. Buying stocks with the highest or lowest five-year earnings per share growth also underperforms compared to the overall market. Investing in stocks with the highest net profit margins or return on equity ROE, yielded slightly better results, but not significantly better than investing in all stocks. The most profitable strategy was investing in stocks with the highest one-year price appreciation, but this method comes with significant volatility and risk. Conversely, investing in stocks with the worst price performance proved to be a terrible strategy. Overall, the author cautions against relying on a single indicator or strategy and emphasizes the importance of diversification in investment decisions. Multi-factor model for high returns. Investors can maximize their returns with a multi-factor model that combines value and growth measures, especially with small stocks. For example, investing in 50 stocks with good price growth and P.E. ratios below 20 yielded $22.7 million in 45 years, while those with high price growth and price-to-book ratios below 1 grew to $18.6 million, and the set with high relative price strength and P.S. ratios below 1 grew to $23.3 million. Large stocks yielded significantly lower returns with the same models. Best and Worst Stock Strategies A comprehensive ranking of 66 different stock strategies from 1954 to 1996 found price-to-sales ratios less than 1 and high relative strength as the most profitable method, earning $13 million. Stocks with high earnings yield and relative strength ranked second with $12.6 million, while all stocks ranked 47th and grew to $1.6 million. In contrast, the S&P 500 made $972,000, and the least profitable strategy was high price-to-sales ratio and low relative strength, earning only $30,000. Winning Strategies for Investment Learn the essential rules for successful investing and avoid dangerous hot stocks by following disciplined strategies. Investing should be evaluated in a long-term approach and consistency is more important than following the latest trends. A profitable strategy with a 25-year history is most likely to succeed, but even a mediocre one followed consistently can beat the rushed method. Diversifying your investment portfolio among a mix of growth and value approaches, including multi-factor models, can guard against market fluctuations. It's not about emotions, it's about smart investing. As we journey through the summary of what works on Wall Street, the crucial lessons lie in the importance of consistency, patience, and discipline when it comes to investing. Favoring passive management over active management, the book's teachings emphasize that long-term investment strategies, based on solid data and value measures, yield greater outcomes than risky short-term maneuvers or following the fluctuations of human emotion. To optimize your investment growth, consider embracing multi-factor models that marry growth and value approaches. In the end, the key to successful investing is striking a balance between strategic consistency and the ability to adapt to new information, all the while keeping emotion and impulse in check.